today is Mirella Chelai. Mirella is the Director of Mobile Marketing at Zinio. She is an award-nominated marketer and speaker with a passion for and expertise in the mobile marketing space with 15 plus years of B2C experience leading global digital strategy and driving marketing programs with an emphasis on brand awareness, digital and mobile innovation, and inspiring leadership. In today's episode, Mirella is going to talk to me about how she was confronted with her app Zinio's rankings tanking to 2.3 and how she and her team helped get it back to 4.5. This is a great episode about what to do to turn around an app redesign gone wrong. I'm very excited to welcome Mirella Chalai to, to the Mobile User Acquisition Show. Mirella, welcome to the show. Uh, thank you so much. I'm, I'm very happy to, you know, to uh, get involved and um, uh, hopefully what the information we're going to provide today is be very useful for, you know, for the listeners. Uh, so uh, today I'm going to talk about our app, Zinio. Yeah. Uh, Zinio is the world's first and largest digital newsstand. We have a portfolio of over 6,000 magazines in digital format, which yeah. are being distributed to our online newsstand and mobile apps for iOS yeah. and Android. Uh, to date, we delivered over half of billion magazine issues to customers from 200 countries. Wow. Uh, we work with pretty much most of the top brands globally and carries, uh, I would just give a couple of examples, um, National yeah. Geographic, Time, The Economist, um, GQ, Vogue, uh, and many, many others. Yeah. And that's precisely why we are here, because you manage mobile marketing at, on a very, very humongous scale. And the specific part that I do want to dig in is a turnaround that I think is very, very impressive, a very specific phase of your career where the Zinio app's rating had dropped to 2.3 and you had get it back up to 4.5, right? And that's, I think, is such a cool and interesting and compelling story that I would love to dig, in, dig into. Mm -hmm. However, before we get to how you went from 2.3 to 4.5, I would love for you to tell us why the app rating actually dropped to 2.3. Mm -hmm. uh, sure. So we were founded in 2001, which means we've been around for 18 years. And throughout this time, we redesigned our website and apps several times. Um, you know, redesigns we all know are vital for any user facing apps in order to stay fresh and current in a very fast changing market. But more often than not, uh, redesigns feel uh, very unwelcome, uh, resulting in angry users, uh, which post you know, negative app reviews and give uh, low star ratings. Um, this is actually what we went through last year when we had a complete platform upgrade and server migration, which resulted in a public backlash uh, for several reasons. Although primarily because we left out some of the features uh, that our existing users enjoyed a lot. Uh, so as a result, a significant number of uh, our most loyal users started posting negative reviews in the App Store and gave us one and two stars, uh, which ultimately caused our average rating to drop in just a couple of months. Um, I would also mention the fact that the lower ratings uh, ended up affecting our App Store ranking. Where uh, pre-upgrade, we were in the top 40 within our category, and post-upgrade, we ended up in top 500. <laughs> wow, that sounds scary to go through, <laughs> especially <laughs> since your best users are basically having this mutiny. And uh, certainly a complete revamp, a complete redesign can be a pretty dramatic period, can be a pretty intense period. And now we are having to deal with this customer backlash. How did you guys identify the sources of the problem? Right? So you're seeing all these reviews, but clearly, how did you identify what the issues were, what the key and the key issues were? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I mean, we are constantly monitoring our ratings, our reviews, and, uh, you know, constantly answer the reviews. Uh, so we, when we notice that our average rating dropped so significantly, um, that's when we realized we had a problem. 
So we basically started reading each review that was posted after the migration. We started sending out uh, surveys and we managed this way to identify the most frequent topics that the customers were complaining about, which turned out to be a f you know, some of the features uh, that um, were left out from the old apps. Um, for example, the ability to delete multiple publications at the same time, sure. or the ability to download um, multiple publications at the same time. So, I mean, these were our most loyal users. They've been with us for years. So obviously in the libraries, they had thousands of magazines. Yeah. So when we remove that feature, well, <laughs> yeah. the reaction is not exactly <laughs> pleasant. Yeah, 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 yeah. Out of curiosity, was did this not come up in the research process before the uh, redesign at all? Yeah, unfortunately not. <laughs> yeah. But also, you know, I mean, it's it's such a big project when, yeah. it, as I mentioned, it was a redesign. So front end, back end, server migration. So all the data had to be migrated. It, it was a huge amount of work. Yeah. For you know, relatively yeah. smaller. <laughs> yeah. 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 And I can imagine with that level of complexity that goes into a redesign across, you know hundreds of thousands of users, hundreds of magazines, I can imagine it's easy to get some of these decisions off and that can very adversely impact the user experience in a way that you wouldn't necessarily foresee. So, right, so your ratings dropped to 2.3 in a very short period of time, in a couple of months. And while the ratings are down, how does your growth trajectory change? How does your paid marketing spend change while the rating is down? We basically completely stopped doing any paid marketing during this time as it would have been a waste of our money. The, the ratings, um, we all know that ratings affect the conversion rate from impression to installs. Yeah. Uh, so less than 10% of visitors that would have uh, you know, landed on our app page would have uh, downloaded our app because our rating was so bad. Yeah. So we knew that it would have basically been a waste of money um, getting yeah. users to our page and not getting any installs. Yeah. So you were like, right, step one, we're going to stop spending. We're stop, going to stop getting new users. Yep. Of course, that wasn't going to be enough because the rating was still at 2.3. What, what next? How did you address the problem of uh, 2.3 rating? Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, first of all, once we were able to identify the, the main reasons customers were complaining, which were the features I mentioned, uh, we added those to our roadmap and uh, you know, our developing team started working again and they introduced those features um, as soon as they, you know, as soon as they were able to do that. Yeah. Uh, so first of all, take, you know, we took care of the immediate problem. Yeah. And then the second step, uh, we were focusing on identifying the, you know, the silent majority. That would be the, uh, the satisfied users who would rarely leave ratings and reviews, even though they are very happy with their experience, they're happy with the app. They just don't, you know, they don't feel compelled to express that happiness on, on yeah. these um, public channels. Uh, so we wanted to identify those people and sort of encourage them to rate us. Mm -hmm. So we did several brainstorming sessions and we tried to come up with different scenarios on how to find those happy customers. So basically the question we were trying to answer was, when is a Xenia user most likely to be very happy with their experience in the app? Mm -hmm. And to this question, we came up with several answers. Uh, this moment could be right after they made a purchase or after they interacted with the content by, I don't know, bookmarking an article or sharing an article or after several consecutive sessions in a very short amount of time. This could all be interpreted as signs that they were very pleased with the experience. Right. So we created several audiences based on these specific events, purchase yeah. completed, article shared, etc. Yeah. We identified uh, up to, I think, 20 segments. Mm -hmm. And then each of these segments, uh, we run tests on a very small portion, I think 15% yeah. of each uh, segment. 
-hmm. And after several months, we looked at the results and chose the top three winning segments, uh, which mm -hmm. were the audiences, which delivered the highest percentage of five star ratings. Mm -hmm. And then for those three segments, uh, we ramped up the campaigns to the entire audience, 100% of the audience for each segment. Right. In a few months, uh, we were able to recover and even surpass the average uh, rating pre-migration. So uh, pre-migration, our average rating was 4.2. Yeah. Immediately post migration, we dropped to 2.1. Yeah. Uh, within a few months, uh, increased to 2.3, and currently we are at 4.5 stars. And yeah. also, our up, up store rating has also increased, and now we are in top 20 within our category. Yeah, I think that's so impressive. Not just because of the magnitude of the results and the change but also because of the very structured process you took to get there, right? You looked at 20 segments that were likely to be pleased with the app experience, tested app rating prompts on a small segment of these, and really doubled down on what was working. Out of curiosity, if you're comfortable sharing, what were the top three segments? Uh... Oh, that's a very good question. I don't really have it in front of me right now, but I would, I mean, from what I remember, the, the most uh, engaged segment, the, the top one was, uh, uh, so th those were the users that have uh, just completed a purchase. So that was right. the number one segment, users okay. that just completed a purchase. I th uh, number two was users that had, um, of high number of sessions mm -hmm. in weeks. Mm -hmm. And I can't remember the third one. <laughs> all good, all good. Yeah, I know it was a while ago, but you know, that's certainly impressive how scientifically and how methodically you approached this. And if you're open to sharing, what did the prompt look like? You prompted these guys to rate. Was there anything yeah. uh, around the messaging that you can recollect? Uh, yeah, so the, the message was very simple. Uh, we were basically asking, would you rate Xenio five stars? Okay. And uh, the two options, yes and no. <laughs> okay. No, thank okay. That's it. Cool. Yeah, that, that was simple. That didn't re really require rocket science. But to get to that point, you needed to do a lot of analysis to understand uh, who, how to really move the needle on these ratings. Mm -hmm. and yeah, I should, I should also mention that we actually tested several creatives on yeah. very small segments, and yeah. this was actually the, the, winning, um, the winning message, the one that I mentioned with Would right. you your What were some of the ones, if you can remember, what were some of the ones that did not win, that surprised, may have surprised you? Yeah, the, the other ones had a lot more copy on okay. the creative, okay. probably that yeah, we were okay. Let's just reduce the copy, All like right. a very simple creative. Uh, and Mirella, what advice do you have for folks who are about to embark on a redesign and want to make sure they don't go to 2.3 rating? I would say, first of all, uh, they should brace for impact because it's coming. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, And um, I, I would definitely start by identifying the most popular features, uh, sending yeah. surveys, um, you know, find as many channels as possible to communicate with their user base in advance, um, alert them of the coming changes through all the possible channels, email, social, in-app, um, also offer instant and easy access to customer support so users yeah. can get instant response. Right. Um, offer as many non-public feedback channels as possible. Uh, try to divert the negative feedback from, you know, from the App Store, from the yeah. Play Store, and prepare as many negative scenarios as possible. Uh, yeah. You know, you can imagine maybe the password reset is not going to work, or maybe yeah. the login details are not recognized. Yeah. And have a plan for each possible scenario. Yeah. Plan for the best prepare for the worst because exactly. yeah not everyone's going to be able to bounce back from 2.3 to 4.5 but you did uh, amazing for you Mirella thank you for being on the mobile user acquisition show uh, and sharing all your wisdom with us today
Oh no, thank you so much for the invite and always always happy <laughs> to, to get involved.